Uh, right now, just spraying me. That's all we know. And we can uh, reevaluate tomorrow. It seemed like the game was it was close, obviously, until that that point. Um, next game, the run in the in the third quarter, another run that Big reason. They had 34 points in, in the fourth quarter, so we wasn't getting stops. So it wasn't on me taking a chance on, you know, um, someone getting injured. Uh, no way we could have won that game down 16 the way we were playing offensively. And so I just got my guys out. Would you say, would you say that the problems tonight were related to incorporating a new player like James or, or they, they were separate from, from whatever awkwardness there might have been there? I just think getting familiar with, one, with each other, but the same thing has been killing us, you know, last couple of years, just rebounding the basketball. You know, we had uh, 18 offensive rebounds, and then turning the basketball, we had 22 turnovers. So you can't beat a good team when you, you know, give up 18 offensive rebounds, and then you turn the ball over 22 times. It's just too hard to win a game. So I like some things that I saw, you know, on the floor. Um, we got to make some adjustments as far as rotation-wise. But, you know, um, overall, just, you know, defense being that second half, we went, we went really good. What you think of James? I thought James was really good. His conditioning, all that stuff looked good. Yeah, he got tired. You know, he got tired a couple of stints or whatever and had to come out. But, you know, I thought overall just, you know, orchestrating, making the right play, um, making the right pass and pick and roll was really good. So it's going to take a little time to get in game shape. We understand that. But his presence on the floor, the floor was definitely felt. So how comfortable do you think all four of those guys felt the way they still trying to feel each other out? Still trying to feel each other out. And like I said, it's going to be a process. And I, and I love the process we got to go through to get to where we want to get to. And we're going to get there for sure. But, um, you know, just trying to keep everybody in rhythm. You know, like I said, with four dynamic scores, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. So just, you know, tweaking the, um, the lineups a little bit. Um, I'm not going to panic right now, but just making sure everybody's comfortable and um, playing, you know, um, to their abilities. And so it's going to be tough when you got four guys that, you know, used to having the ball in their hands. And so just a sacrifice was there. But we just got to make sure we're better. And it starts with me, just making sure we keep everybody involved in the game. Well, it's your been effort to get Kawhi involved in the, coming out in the second half. Yes. Coach, there was a play there, I think it was second or third quarter, where James drops down the paint. And then I think PJ and Norm were in the same corner. And then he threw out to one of them and then <laughs> kind of just borrowed. I was just, I mean, how long does it normally take guys to start figuring out that spacing and where, where to be? Yeah, it's a little different. You know, um, all training camp in the first, you know, five games, you know, we've been telling our guys to make sure they cut when Kawhi and PG come out the pick and roll um, to give them space. But when James handles the basketball, you know, try to, you know, be more space and just stay in our spots so we can make the pass and make the read. So that's going to be a little different for us, but it's going to take some time. Like I said, just, you know, that first half, just defensively, I thought we were really good. So that's something to kind of grow on. And, um, you know, we just kind of go from there. You mentioned rebounding already being an issue for trade, but do you worry about rebounding when you have those four guys on there and then only Zoo or one big? Those four? Yeah. The, the James. Yeah. The no, four. because James and Russ, they rebound the ball well. PG right. and Kawhi, great rebounders as well. So um, I don't think we're going to struggle in that point. I think we're going to struggle more, like I said, with the second unit, you know, rebounding the basketball, not the first unit. Why did you uh, decide to have James run the second unit? Um, just so he can have the ball in his hands and make plays and um, score the basketball and run pick and rolls, which I thought he did a good job with. So, um, you know, the more comfortable our guys get with playing with him, um, they see they're going to get open shots and just know where to be on the floor and they're spacing, and we're going to be okay. Ty, in your head, do you have a certain amount of games that you look at and you're like, eh, after 10 games or 15 games, I think I'm going to have a better idea. 10. Yeah. There's been all this. Uh, Guys, we're always talking about like his game shape and stuff like that. But from like a procedural standpoint, he hasn't played a preseason game, hasn't really been in five or five scrimmages. From like the, the pregame warmups and that's all orchestrated from ninety nine to zero on the clock. Is that from a player's perspective think that's hard to get back into, or he's been doing this for fifteen years and it's not that big a challenge? Can you say it again? You say he hasn't played five or five? Like, like the, the pregame procedure to get here and warm up and like get, ramp up for an NBA game, is that particularly like a challenge compared to? Oh, it's definitely a challenge. Like I said, if everybody else is in game shape and you play four or five preseason games and you know you play five regular season games, like you ramped it up. And so it's gonna take him a little time to get there to the, get to that point. And we understand that, so um, we're not worried about that. How much does Jinx 
presence offensively saves energy for PJ Kawhi or the guys on defense? Yeah, a lot. I think just you know his ability to make reads in the pick and roll, um, making the right pass, and also scoring the basketball is huge. And so with Kawhi and PG, like I said, are tired, and they can just you know get ready for some catch and shoot threes. You know James is running high pick and roll. And so, like I said, we're going to get to that point. And like I, said, I like, I like some things I saw tonight. We just got to continue to be better. Carlo Julius was shooting pretty poorly entering yeah, tonight, yeah, and then yeah. he kind of <laughs> got off tight. Mm -hmm. What did you see from him? I, I knew it was going to happen. You know, every time. <laughs> I, you mentioned that you, you, there were some things that you, you liked that you, that you saw that you liked. And then you mentioned the defense in the first half. But what else did you do? Um, offensively, just you know, having the ball in James' hand. I think um, second half we did a better job of advanced passes and attacking early in transition. We got a lot of stops in the first half. We never threw the advanced pass to attack early, so that was better for us in that third quarter. And then just you know, guys getting familiar. You know, I caught a few plays. We couldn't get in those spots. You know, they went. It's easier to run in practice, but then when the game's going on and then try to run on the fly, it was kind of tough for us tonight. So it's gonna take a little time for us to really get our offense down the way we want to get it down. Ten games because that's how long we should take them to sort of get used to playing with each other, or because that should sort of get used to the plays and everything. Uh, for me to get used to them, gotta, yeah, understand what I need to do. I I know it's only one game, so of course you don't overreact. I'm not going to overreact. But um, you've been talking about how everybody's going to make sacrifices. It's going to be one guy's night one night, somebody else is the next. But then you come out in the second half and make sure that Kawhi gets the ball. Is he the guy out of those four that has to have the ball every night? I mean, he's the best player. So, yeah. So the the other three would be more pick and choose as far as who has to sacrifice. Well, I mean, everybody has to sacrifice, but I thought just you know, the matchup with Kawhi, we can attack that a little more. You know, instead of uh, spreading it out the way we did, I thought just getting him into a rhythm would help us out offensively, and it did. You know, so. Um, you know, we just got to make sure we just keep everybody engaged, you know, as well as PG offensively as well. And so, you know, Russ and James have been in the league in assists, I think, the last four or five years. So they're, they're capable of making the plays and setting those guys up and making sure we're in the right spots. And so I don't think it'd be a problem at all. How much of an advantage is it to you know that you have to get Chance in that he's staying in New York for a couple of days or playing practice center in two nights? Is that like a good situation for you guys where you have to get everything in right? So he said what was With James, you know, coming in the team, and obviously it's a lot of changes, but the fact that you're able to stay in New York, play practice center in two nights, is that an advantage at this point? Yeah, I mean, just as much practice time we can get, and just, you know, um, continue to keep getting better is huge for us. I think, you know, like I said, James continue to pick up the plays and understand what we need him on the floor um, is going to be good for us. So, yeah, I think so. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Yeah,